Thank you. It's really wonderful to be here today with the auto industry workers and management leaders. I'm also pleased to be joined by two incredible members of my Cabinet, Transportation Secretary Elaine Chow and Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Scott Pruitt. They've been doing an amazing job. They've done a lot of work in a very short period of time. We're looking forward to getting the rest of our Cabinet approved because, believe it or not, uh, we don't have it yet. I also want to thank Senator, Senator. We have two great Senators from a great state to understand we're going to be heading out there very soon. Right, Bob? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lamar, very much. Appreciate you being here. You want to take some of this business back with you, I think, right? But they're doing big expansions in Michigan. That's what I've been promising, and I guess maybe it's one of the reasons I won the state of Michigan, much to the surprise of a lot of people, because it's been many, many years. But I also want to uh, thank Mary Barra on my right, who really has been uh, spearleading it and uh, doing a great job with General Motors. We're going to create uh, 900 brand new jobs that was just announced, and that's going to be peanuts compared to the kind of numbers we're going to be seeing in the near future. I believe Mary's going to get on board and really uh, build new plants in Michigan and other states in the United States, and it's going to be thousands and thousands of workers. And I want to thank you very much because you really have been spearheading. My uh, first week in office, some of the executives came to the White House, uh, became friendly with Mark. Where's Mark? Where's Mark sitting? And, uh, and Bill, Bill Ford, and uh, it's been really great, Mark, and I appreciate everything you're doing. It's been just super. Sergio flew in from Europe. He told me it took him 12 hours. I said, what kind of a plane were you flying? <laughs> Where is Sergio? There he is. But you've been doing great, and you make a great product, and I appreciate it, especially when you make them in the United States, right? So thank you. Uh, so the Obama administration, 11th hour executive actions. We're going back, and they really did go back on a promise, and it would have, I think, destroyed or further destroyed the automobile industry. The prior administration promised to listen to industry leaders like you about any concern you had with the current fuel efficiency standards during a so-called midterm review in 2016 and 2018. Then the days went by, and before my inauguration, they did away with a midterm review. Is that a correct statement, Mary? You don't want to get too involved politically, but is that a correct statement? They did away with it. Could I ask you, Mark, is that a correct statement? Yeah, they finalized it. Right? It never happened. Were you misrepresented? We want to use a nice term. Were you misrepresented to? Uh, it wasn't according to the process. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Imposing painful new restrictions on the American automobile production lines and undermining our ability to compete with other countries and other places throughout the world, which are very, very competitive, believe me, especially when it comes to making cars. Today, I'm here to make right on what you were promised. We are reinstituting the midterm review. We're going to reinstitute that review, and we're giving you a voice in the process. We're going to do some Wonderful work with you, but you have to come back and you have to give us big numbers in terms of jobs. And I know the unions are going to treat them very nicely because, Dennis, we can't go crazy here. You understand that, okay? We'll, we'll we got to take it nice need. and easy. We love the workers. We got to take it nice and easy. We got to let them build. Remember that, Dennis. I know you so well. So, I know you're competitors, and you'll always be competitors. But we're all on the same side. The most important issue. This is, to me, the most important issue, and that's keeping jobs in America and creating new jobs in the United States. That's why I'm here today. We're going to create new jobs, many, many new jobs, new plants, not just an expansion of the plants, new plants, modern plants, like you've been building in Mexico, like you've been building in other locations. We want to have new plants built in Michigan and new plants built in Ohio and new plants in Pennsylvania and North Carolina and so many other places. And that's what we're looking for. So we're going to go all out. We're lowering your taxes. We're going to remove one job-killing regulation after another. The regulations have already made a big impact on the auto business and on most other businesses. And we're far from being finished. We've signed many executive orders reducing regulations. 
we are far from finished. We think we can get rid of about 75 percent of the regulations in many cases and have more security for the worker, for the environment, and in safety, because safety is so important. So we'll have better security, and that's why I'm very glad that my head of the environmental protection is here, Scott, wherever you are, Scott. So, hello, Scott. So this is going to be a new era for American jobs and job creation, and a new era, almost like the beginning, for the American automobile manufacturers. We're going to make thousands and thousands and thousands of additional cars. We're going to make them in the United States. We're going to work with you on regulations. We're going to work with you on taxes. But you've got to work with us on new plants, on new jobs, and bringing back our country to a level that it's never seen before in terms of automobile production. And if you're going to do that, you're going to see some really wonderful things happen for yourselves, your industry, and for, most importantly, the people of Michigan and Ohio and all of the states that were so good to me. And they were good to me because they were treated very, very unfairly. And so I'm just here today to begin the process. And with that, if anybody has any questions, uh, would love to take them. Go ahead. Anybody? Dennis, do you want to? ask something. It's always tough when I have the union guy ask first, right? That's always dangerous, Mark, but that's okay. Go ahead, Dennis. Well, I, I just, you know, I appreciate everything you said. I, I think that uh, the focus on jobs in the United States is so important to us as a country and as working men and women in this country. And it, it, it's not just jobs, but it's good-paying jobs and jobs that we can buy, homes and vehicles that we build and everything else. But I, I do get concerned about environmental standards, and I agree with you that the 2018 discussion that we had in, two, and I think it was 2012, right. mm -hmm. we had a discussion. Uh, but we have to have a midterm view because the way we look at it uh, is that uh, we have to deal with the environment. We have to do it in a responsible way where uh, manufacturers are not put in a situation that they cannot invest, uh, but at the same time uh, meet the environmental needs sure. of our nation. So that's a concern. 100%. We agree with you. We all agree with you 100 percent. But we want you to make great cars, and if it takes an extra thimble full of fuel, we don't want that to stop making. And sometimes it's, it's a tiny amount of fuel. It's a very small thing we're talking about. And we want you to make — I understand your business very well. I understand mechanics very well. I was always — I would have been a very good — I would have been a very good shop steward, but I would have been a good mechanic. <laughs> and you know, there comes a point at which you are not making great product anymore. It comes a point at which I would even say people end up buying used cars because they work better because of restrictions that are put on your new product. And we don't want to be at that position. And you were being forced into a position where, in my opinion, that was going to happen. So we're going to open it up and we're going to make it uh, good in terms of your workers, which, uh, you know, uh, years ago you had thousands and thousands of more workers making automobiles in this country than you do today. And this isn't just <coughs> machinery and robotics. This is, you know, the basics. Uh, and we're going to change that. And we want robotics. We want all of that to happen. I'm going to make that, too, by the way. But uh, when I looked at the numbers, I saw thousands, tens of thousands of more workers many years ago than you have today. And we're going to bring that all back. We're going to bring it back for the worker. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Mr. President, you know, on, on any given day, uh, we're all fierce competitors. And I think the reason you have 18 OEMs or car makers sitting around here is because under your leadership to be able to put this uh, midterm review back on, back on uh, track, which, which was what we agreed to back in 2011. Well, you and, weren't treated and, fairly. Because <coughs> I went to many people, and I'm talking about people that are down the middle. They don't care about anything. They just yeah. want a certain fairness, and they were involved. Exactly. And you were not treated. You were misrepresented. And I think, to your point, uh, I just want to make clear that what we've asked for and what you've responded to is to reinstate the review. It's not a rejection of what we agreed to. It's to process. And so we really appreciate your, your leadership. And as always, we want to — we're absolutely, you know, con uh, con uh, committed to improving fuel economy for our, our customers. You know, less greenhouse grasses uh, that's safe for the environment. 
but we need to make sure that it's done sensibly, to your point, in uh, right. taking into account jobs. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, very much. Good job, too. Mary? Yeah, I, I would say uh, echo, echo the comments. I think by opening up the midterm review, we can look at all the development and technologies that have been developed in the last five years and, and the way the industry is changing, not only with ride sharing, with higher use, so we can actually accomplish and do the right thing for the environment, do it more effectively, that supports jobs and supports new technology. So I think it, it is very beneficial that we have this discussion and, and you know find the pathway to do the right thing, and I think we can. And you have to compete with other countries, too. And we're going to make you so competitive that the only ones you can blame are going to be yourselves. You're not going to blame government anymore because you're not doing well against certain countries. You know, I'm so impressed with the people. I'm looking at uh, Toyota. I'm looking at Kia. I'm looking at all these great car companies, uh, Volvo. It's so impressive. Then I look at Reince. I'm blessing you. I'm always. <laughs> You should run a car company. <laughs> he probably will end up doing that in a long time, but maybe not. I don't know. He's done a great job, right? But I thought we could go around the table and we could start with our great Senator Bob Corker and just introduce yourself real quickly and we'll all know who's here. Yes, sir. Bob Corker, Bob? Tennessee. I'm glad to be with you. Thank and, you. Uh, I know that the autom automobile industry plays such a huge role in our nation, and I'm glad to see it flourishing here <clears throat> as it is in many places across the country, and honored to be with all of you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Bob. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm David Janikopoulos with Volkswagen Group of America. I'd like to thank you and Secretary Chow and Administrator Pruitt for reopening the midterm review. We think there's a real opportunity for harmonization of standards. We do think it's important to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and protect the environment. But this process is important by itself, and there are some opportunities there for flexibilities that can help us to comply and achieve the benefits. I also just want to say that we're proud to be in Tennessee and to be represented by Senator Corker and Senator Alexander through our factory in Chattanooga. We've got 7,000 employees there in the country and 3,500 there, and we'd like to grow our presence in the U.S., and we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It'll be a very fair review, too. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I'm Bob Kaiser. I'm the CEO of Gallagher Kaiser. We engineer and manufacture the paint shops. Uh, I'm a strategic supplier of General Motors. Uh, because of General Motors spend in the United States in the last four or five years, I've been able to employ approximately four to 5,000 people at any given time. And I thank you for everything you're doing for the automobile industry. I've been in Detroit my whole life. I've seen the ups and downs, and I think the nation is much better when the cars are, the automotive industry is thriving. Thank you. Are the paints today as good without the lead content? You know, you used to have a high lead content. Yes. <clears throat> and I have heard that paints today maybe are not as good as they used to be because of what's been done. Are paints today as good as they used to be or not? Yes, they're a lot better, I would believe. You think so? Yes. Okay, that's great and less harmful to the environment. Good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Jerry Flannery from Hyundai Motor America. We're based in Southern California. Sure. We um, last year sold <laughs> over 700,000 cars in the United States, and we proudly built 400,000 of those in Montgomery, Alabama. As you know, we committed $3.1 billion um, to further investment true. in the United States over the next five years between Hyundai and Kia, and we hope to bring more jobs working on automation, research and development. Um, look forward to working with you. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Jerry. It's a big investment you're making. I know all about it. Thank you. And uh, you'll be very happy. You're going to be very happy. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership. John? Good afternoon, Mr. President. Thank you very much for joining us here. John Maddox, the President and CEO of the American Center for, Center for Mobility here at Willow Run. We're a technology startup. Uh, we are focused on automated and connected vehicle technologies. We're building a proving grounds here right at Willow Run, taking advantage, uh, continuing the spirit of innovation here, uh, really focused on making a place that auto companies and technology companies and government agencies can use to develop the technology very rapidly. We also see automated technology, connected technology as critical for competitiveness in, in the auto industry. We know Good. other countries are following our lead. We're and going you're going to need a lot of approvals for that, because that is a very tough situation. I know you're having a tough situation in certain states. Not in Tennessee, I don't think. <laughs> they have the autonomous cars without driver. So it's going to be very interesting, but we're going to help you. That's right. We're going to help you as much as we can. And Michigan and the auto industry can lead the way. Thank you. 
Mr. President, Jim Lance from Toyota. Thank you very much uh, for, for being here today and listening to the industry. The midterm review, fair and thorough, is very important. Um, you know, it, as we look at what's happening in the industry, smart regulation is really what we need to think about. Uh, it's very complex today with, with what's going on with emissions and CAFE. Uh, but it shouldn't it, be complex, by the way. Yeah, I would agree. It uh, shouldn't be. It's not a complex subject. It's going to be great regulation, but it's going to be fair. Yeah. But it won't be complex. It'll be better for the environment. It'll be better for safety, but it won't be complex. And, and I think as we look at future regulation around autonomy, around connected cars, uh, other issues that the industry is going to face, that same idea of smart regulation, I think, is really going to work. You know, our, we have we have headquartered our autonomous unit here in North America, a billion dollar investment in artificial intelligence, uh, as well as our connected car company is going to be here in North America. So you will see jobs. You got to build those new plants here, though, Jim. You know yes, what I'm sir. talking about, right? I understand. I know I gave you a hard time, but you got to build them here. OK, I understand. All right, Michael. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. It's an honor to be here. Really appreciate it. Proud to represent Kia Motors and our 3,000 employees down in West Point, Georgia, building the Sorento that you had an opportunity sure. to see nice. there. We opened that plant back in 2009, 360,000 cars built per year, 3,000 employees, 15,000 indirect employees. So really appreciate it. We did it in the height of the recession, took an economic depressed area, and now it's booming. So more jobs coming. Great, Michael. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. I heard that. I just, thank you, sir, I just want to thank you for being here today. I think my colleagues have expressed all our collective concerns. There's not much I can add, but thank you for coming. I think it was thank important. You. Thank you, Sergio. Governor? Yeah, well, thank you for coming, Mr. President. It's exciting to have you here at the American Center for Mobility. Uh, this is going to be the world's best test site for autonomous intelligent vehicles, and it's critically important to our future, and you're helping build that with your thoughts about tax reform, regulatory reform, uh, that's how we've helped bring Michigan back, and we look forward to working with you and great partnership to show how we can lead the world. So thank you for being in Michigan. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. Mr. President, today yeah. is a win for the American economy and the American worker. Thank you. Thank you very much. And keep up the good work. <coughs> Mary? Well, again, Mr. President, thank you for this opportunity. I think the, the team has stated it very well, but I, I want to reinforce you know, we can do the right thing from an environmental perspective. We can do it in an efficient way. We can make sure that we're preserving and even growing jobs. So I see this as a huge opportunity, and I, I hope that we can include that in the dialogue. Good. It will be. You okay, Dennis? You uh, go I'm fine. You know, I, Mr. President, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I, I'm really happy to hear that we're going to continue to work on the environment. Uh, the only thing I would like for you to change a piece of your discussion when you say we want you to build your factories here and be UAW members so we can have a great partnership, <laughs> right? I understand that, Dennis. We want the workers to rise, too. Some right? things never change, right? <laughs> we, we want the workers to rise. We do. Right? The workers okay. are going to rise. Believe me, they're going to have so many options and so many jobs. And uh, we appreciate your support, too, Dennis. i, I got to convince the senator now. <laughs> Dennis is very Marcus, consistent. go ahead, man. Uh, just to reiterate what everybody else says, we can do right by the economy, jobs, and we can do right by the environment. And I think you can have, a, as everybody said, a win-win-win. I would just like to emphasize as we, as we do this uh, midterm review, a very important title was used when we agreed back in 2011, which is One National Standard. And so working together with CARB, California Air Resources Board, uh, NHTSA, and also EPA is going to be hugely important to the entire industry to be able to do this economically, right for the environment, and right for the customer. And that'll be worked out pretty quickly. Very high standards, but worked out quickly. Scott? Mr. President, it's an honor to be with you here today. It's been wonderful to meet you here today as well. As Mark indicated, uh, we've lived under this narrative for the last several years that you can't be pro-growth and pro-environment. That's something we need to reject as a country. We can grow jobs, we can be pro-growth, and we can also be good stewards of the environment. As you look around this table, Mr. President, each of these individuals were told that they were going to take a test in April of 2018. And what happened last year is that the EPA said, no, we're not going to give the test in April of 2018. We're going to accelerate it by 16 months and take the test early. You write at that today. It's great leadership. We appreciate the leadership. Okay. Thank you very much. Jose Muñoz uh, with Nissan. Uh, Mr. President, thank you for the invitation. It's an honor to be here. Uh, we really appreciate the decision that you've taken today. It's an historical moment. 
I want to say that uh, we are very proudly uh, in America since uh, uh, already 58 years, 33 years uh, with production plants, 22,000 employees, uh, 12,000 of them in Tennessee. We appreciate very much uh, the support from Senators uh, Alexander and Corker and also from the Governor uh, Haslam in Tennessee. We have increased our production in America 78% uh, in the last five years, 50% uh, our sales increased, more than one million cars produced. We have the largest plant in America, historically all brands, in Smyrna, Tennessee, 645,000 uh, vehicles produced, and also the largest uh, engine plant also in Decker, Tennessee, uh, with more than one million uh, engines produced. And we've been the first ones uh, in uh, implementing a plant in uh, Mississippi. Thank you very much again. What percentage of your cars are made here versus Japan? Well, uh, we do 65% of our plants uh, here. Uh, Sold yeah. in the United States? Yes. Okay, good. I had your great Prime Minister with me, Prime Minister Abi. He's a great gentleman and a great, become a great friend of mine. So uh, we had a very, very good time two weeks ago. You possibly heard about it. <laughs> Great guy. Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. President. I'm Teach Maxter from Mercedes-Benz USA. Thank you for having us here today, and thank you for opening the door for discussions about regulation that can support growth. Good. At Mercedes-Benz, we've also been producing vehicles in the U.S. for about 20 years. We made. Uh, we started with the SUV production for the whole world here. We're down in Vance, Alabama, producing over 300,000 vehicles there. Right. About 70% actually uh, exported to other countries in the world. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I think uh, we are the Benjamin here. We are the junior around the table. We don't have a car yet, as you probably have seen. We are, we are building a factory in the United States as we speak. In, where, South, where in South Carolina, good. close to Charleston. Good. We, will open it, we will open it mid next year. We will start with 60,000 cars and have the capacity to move it on to 140,000 cars. So we are delighted to be here. We took a deliberate choice to be in the United States, and I think we, we are happy we took, that, uh, we took that decision. Well, thank you. And South Carolina is a great place, very special place. And again, our chief of staff. Uh, Reince, would you like to say something? Other than really proud to work for the president, who works hard every day. I've never seen anyone work harder than him. And the accomplishments that he's put on the on the table so far uh, have been tremendous, and he's got the hearts of the American worker on his mind every day. And you're all part of making that dream come true. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Rick Shostak from Honda. I also want to add our voice of thanks for reinstating the midterm review process. Thanks to you and to Administrator Pruitt, we very much appreciate that. Honda has 12 manufacturing facilities in the United States. We've been building here since 1979. Not only cars, but uh, lawnmowers, generators, all-terrain vehicles. Uh, I recently opened a plant making jets in South Carolina, business jets in, so that, in North beautiful. Carolina. Very nice. Uh, and proud to employ 30,000 hardworking men and women <coughs> here in the in the United States. And you know, looking forward with new technologies and environmental technologies, we just recently announced, along with General Motors, a joint venture to make fuel cells right here in Michigan. That's great. Thank you very much, Rick. Mr. President, I'm David Dunk from American Axle Manufacturing, um, Tier 1 Automotive Supplier of Driveline, Drivetrain, and uh, Metal Form Products. We support General Motors, Ford, and FCA, as well as many of the other esteemed OEMs here. Um, strong manufacturer committed to a U.S. manufacturing. Um, we are in the process of acquiring another U.S.-based company. We'll be adding an additional 30 U.S. plants to our portfolio today, which is over 20. Uh, we'll have uh, 25,000 associates uh, as part of our organization when it's all said and done. So uh, very committed to U.S. manufacturing, very committed yeah. to your agenda, and I'm glad to be, be with you and support the team. Great company, too. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I'm Steve Miller, and I'm uh, CEO at International Automotive Components. We have 80 factories around the world and serve uh, all of the major automakers near their place of business. Uh, you hired my boss. Wilbur Ross uh, to uh, join your cabinet. Uh, which I'm great Smart guy, he's right? Going, Smart. He's going to deal with the trade issues, and he understands sure. them deeply. Our industry is inherently a global uh, supply chain, right? And we need to make sure that America is treated fairly, but that should not stop the benefits that all people get from. Well, you do know trade. that we are not being treated fairly, though. You do know that, right? 
I think, better than anybody. Uh, Thank you very no, much. America is not being treated fairly by the world, and it's going to be treated fairly, believe me. Senator? Thanks, Mr. President, for bringing me to Michigan, where auto jobs are growing. When we leave here, we'll be going to another state where they're growing, Tennessee. Thanks to uh, General Motors, Nissan, Volkswagen, and 1,000 suppliers, auto jobs are now one-third of all of our manufacturing jobs. And the single most important thing you can do to help us is what you're doing today, which is to create a competitive environment so that the plants and the suppliers in our country can compete with the rest of the world. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Dave Trott, Congressman from uh, Southeast Michigan. Thank you for coming back to Michigan. Uh, Mr. President, we met here several years ago when you came in for the Oakland County Lincoln Dinner. I think it's still the largest Lincoln Dinner in our state's history. Uh, thanks for attacking all the regulations affecting the auto industry. Uh, people forget all these regulations that have been promulgated at about $6,000 at the cost of every car. And uh, also, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that uh, Speaker Ryan is doing a great job getting your health care solution through Good. the House. Good man. And I want to thank you, Dave. It's true. About five or six years ago, I was given the Man of the Year in Michigan. And I made a speech. I didn't know I'd be doing this. I didn't know I'd be running for president. I made a speech, and I said, your car industry is being stolen from you. Is that right? Great and speech. I spoke about it, and I think the people of Michigan never forgot that speech. And uh, that's why we're here. So, and I want to thank you for your support. You were amazing for a long time. Thank you, Dave. Uh, does anybody have any questions? And then we're going to head out. We're going to do a little speech. Everyone okay? I want to thank everybody very much, and let's go to the next event. Okay. Next